What's going on there guys? Good Sunday evening, November 29th, 2020 is the date, 8 p.m. West Coast time here in California. And uh, a little bit to talk about in the solar weather department, but first we'll jump into the earthquake department. 2.5, the latest quake out here in the, around the Puerto Rico area, 2.5 in that green flag right there. Worldwide activity, a uh, lot of whole lot of red color rings out there indicating the older earthquakes but also some new activity out there just to the northeast of Fiji Islands there. 5.6 and also a little aftershock, so to speak, 4.9 down there. Some shallow quakes up here in this area. Normally we'll see a lot of deep movement out there. Today, not so much deep, but uh, definitely some shallow quakes there taking place. A deeper movement, a little bit further down south, where we've seen that 5.3 strike at 457 kilometers below the surface. Also some deep movement up here. Uh, right around the uh, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire with 4.2. far as the uh, trimmer map in the Pacific Northwest, a little bit of uptick compared to last night, especially up in Oregon, just uh, to the west of Portland area. You can see that uh, cluster of red trimmer being picked up along the Cascadia subduction zone. That uh, is not that big of a deal. Only seen about 115 epicenters out there over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Some activity down there in southern Oregon as well, but uh, things appear to be calming down in that uh, trimmer department. Uh, let's see what else we got. Some earthquake activity out here around the uh, Mendocino Triple Point Junction out here. Little 3.5. Oh, just off the coast there. Got Eureka, Arcata, Fortuna area. Uh, just south of the uh, Mega Cascadia Mega Thrust Zone. There's a couple unnamed fault systems in here as well. Triple Point Junction sits about here. So we're looking at, uh, well, just, just to the southeast of there. Not a whole lot of movement out there in that region today, but... Uh, Still keeping an eye on it. Looks like there was a smaller one up there too. Uh, yeah, 2.4. Just right after, a couple hours right after that 3.5. Uh, movement down here to the south. A little bit, little bit of activity. Not a whole lot, folks. Just some sporadic movement. Um, there's really no major type of swarming going on. Some microquakes down there in a the small little cluster, but uh, not considering that any type of swarming. Also, no major movement out here along the Salton Sea or the uh, Brawley and Imperial Fault Systems. Pretty quiet for the most part. Ridgecrest area seeing a little uptick in activity. They did see a 3.1 striking out there. Just to the northeast of the Ridgecrest area. Within that area that ruptured last year during the July 4th and July 5th sequence of quakes out there. But uh, I tell you what, definitely calming down for the most part not like we were seeing uh, about a month ago uh, where it was like uh, 50 60 earthquakes a day within that region nevada still pretty much the same thing one in the one in the same for the most part when it comes to ridgecrest uh, activity it's just uh kind of kind of mellowing out there's been a couple earthquakes there over the last hour but uh, these are mostly microquakes there around the mina nevada area <clears throat> And same for up in Idaho. These guys here, a little bit on the uh, low magnitude end today. 2.5 being the largest quake in the cluster of quakes up here near the Sawtooth Fault System, which sits right there, stretches down uh, down to the south. So all this activity like it has been uh, basically up here in the northern part of this region. No major quakes to report in that area. Also for the Yellowstone region. Uh, let's go over here and check that out real quick. Not a whole lot to report there as well. Uh, I'm trying to think what see what that earthquake is. It's showing up on all the seismograph stations. I'm guessing that's from... Let me see here. Uh, 
kind of looks like a pretty good size. It's possible I could could should say um, that it may have may have been some of these earthquakes down south here, almost borderline 6.0 in the uh, South America area. But it's hard to say. Most of the time, when you see an earthquake like that, that's kind of a drawn out far distant distant earthquake is what i'm trying to say here not a big earthquake but definitely distant and it was picked up though by by uh, a few stations there i just can't figure out exactly which one um which earthquake uh, it was out there on the map but definitely not localized uh let's see what else we got yeah just pretty quiet out there in the earthquake department no uh no major swarming going on um space weather picking up a little bit there was an m 4.4 blast oh, not blast but flare that also hurled a uh, cme not earth directed at all this part of the sun is see that flare right there that's pretty bright that was kind of definitely facing away from us this here is the face side of the sun uh, there's a little bit better view this is our face this area right here kind of Still crackling a little bit uh, with some potential flare activity, but nothing like what this one did over here. Um, and that's slowly going to be turning towards the Earth side over the next couple days here. Uh, not a big flare, but it is the biggest flare uh, in more than three years. Of course, we've been having some quiet activity there on the sun with the solar minimum. Uh, we will be coming out of that into uh, solar maximum here over the next couple few years. Let's see. Uh, I know there was a little article out here. Oh yeah, this is also uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of information from the whole solar ham department. Uh, new solar cycle 25 continues. It's impressive sudden awakening. I mean, I think it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting to see the sun waking up. Uh, M4.4 long duration event was detected uh, earlier this morning. Uh, let's see. Because the event took place behind the limb, other than the initial radio blackout, uh, radio blackouts happen almost immediately following a solar flare. It does not take days to get here like a CME, CME does. Uh, but as soon as that flare pops off, it's almost instant effects out here on the Earth, which has uh, some... Um, effects on radios, HF and whatnot, uh, skip, so to speak, kind of like what, what we talked about last night, uh, should have little impact on our planet as far as the CME, CME goes because it was blasted off. Bla Good Lord, blasted off right there. You see that? Uh, blasted off, not towards our direction, which is good, but even so, uh, see me like that and an M4.4 flare wouldn't do too much damage here on Earth. Uh, it would just create some uh, beautiful auroras up in the uh, Arctic and Antarctic circle down there. Arctic up, up top and uh, of course down in the south there they would get that around Antarctica as well. So it would be pretty cool to see but that was not Earth directed. Uh, looking at the potential for future flares far as the regions go, uh, current solar flare threat, sitting at a C flare potential there, 70% M flare, another M flare potential about 35%, X flare highly unlikely, but you never know, uh, at 10%. In fact, the space weather uh, site here mentioned about, uh, let's see here, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, remarkably, this flare was even bigger than it seems. The blast site is located just behind the sun's southeastern limb. As a result, the explosion was partially eclipsed by the body of the sun. And these guys are stating it might have been an X-class event. Uh, let's see here. The CME will not hit the Earth as mentioned. Uh, but we would be anticipating a strong geomagnetic magnetic storm maybe next time. Anyway, yeah, sun's coming to life, folks. Uh, it's a good thing. Solar flares are uh, play a, a 
solar activity plays a major part on activity here in on the earth whether it's uh you know weather earthquake department uh, volcanoes a lot of stuff goes on uh, and it's closely related to solar activity i firmly believe that uh let's see what else we got here space weather let's see yeah these guys still issuing 35 percent class m over the next looks like 24 and 48 hours with a class x potential at 10 percent that'd be pretty crazy if we get a class x x flare that would be uh simply amazing so forecasters expect solar cycle 25 to peak in 2025 so this is just the beginning. So as we head towards the year 2025, we should expect to see uh, the sun disk here with multiple um, multiple sunspots on it uh, at any given time during the day at the peak season. I mean, we could have 10 on any you know any position here on the sun's surface. Right now, it's like I say, it's looking very interesting. It's definitely uh, coming to life. So we'll leave it at that, and um, we'll see what the sun wants to produce. Here's another shot of it. 2786 is the one that's kind of facing us right now. The far side one here is uh, well, it's not on the, it's not on there yet. Uh, but it will be as this uh, starts to rotate towards us a little bit. Let me go back over here and see. This one kind of shows shows the sunspot numbers here. Well, yeah, 2786. This is an updated map right here. That old one, yeah, that was from quite a few hours ago. So this is the area, definitely some areas to watch right here when it comes to uh, potential high uh, solar activity. On average, it takes 13.5 days for a region to transit the far side of the sun. Uh, the rotation rate is faster towards the equator and slower towards the polar regions. Oh, pretty crazy. Uh, this site right here, solarham.net, is really cool when it comes to checking out uh, you know, a lot of solar activity. They do have uh, definitely a, a large wealth of information here and links to numerous sites when it comes to solar weather. It's pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Please stay safe. Have a great night. And uh, we'll chat you guys sometime tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. Woo! Catch you folks later. Have a good night, everyone.